you already know what's going to go on, right? I mean, yeah, how I many of my podcasts have you seen? I think at least more than 90. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. No, no, no. That's a lot of because me. Because the thing is, what happens is when you paint, because I'm listening used to, to listening it. to yeah. podcasts when I paint. Yes. So, yeah. So, I listen to um, Creative and Creative Endeavor podcast by Andrew Tischler. Yes. He's a Kiwi painter. Yes. So, he was Aussie before. And then I listen to Carl's podcast, Carl Olson's yeah, I, The Artful Painter. Yeah, he does a very nice interview. Yeah. He really does. Yeah. I, I saw that you had done his interview, and I listened to the first mm, 40, or maybe a minute and a half. Okay. Mainly to be able to know how to say your name. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't want to know anything about you until yeah. I interview you. Oh, really? Okay. Really, yeah. yeah, because, it, I mean, it just, I want that you know, excitement yeah. to find yeah. out what the story is. Yeah. And if I've heard some of it, I don't know what he asked. So luckily I don't know how deep he went or not. And also that's the other thing. I don't want it to influence my questions. Yeah. Like, oh, well, I know what the answer or whatever. But in a way, you know, like a person like me, I'm in shock just to be frank with you because it's like I'm not, I, I'm confused. Like what is so interesting or what you want to know about me? It's like really... Well, let me you see, can, you know, yeah. you did it in complete different profession, which you succeeded at greatly, mm. you know, that you came from India and live in Australia, and yeah. I don't know all the other things, but oh. that alone yeah. is yeah. a big deal, yeah. you know, you change professions just yeah. like I did, yeah. and people do that when they have passion, mm. so I like to hear about passion, yeah. so you clearly have, we have Priya Goron, by the way, and we've already started the podcast, look at her eyes just like glass right over, <laughs> <laughs> they do, because Priya contact me she wrote me this beautiful little you know card that says how much she liked you know my podcast yeah. and then I was like I looked at her paintings I'm like oh my god these paintings are fantastic oh uh, my god I huh? can't believe it huh? it's true though <laughs> that parrot that blue parrot uh, <laughs> just shockingly beautiful uh, and the one that's just like feathers yeah yeah you know yeah, yeah. those are scarlet, you know, scarlet macaws yeah and the hyacinth macaws yeah, yeah. no they're yeah. beautiful and then I went to your website and read a little bit, and you were, said you were going to come out to see me. Yeah. And to just see the gallery, I guess. Actually, I'm specially, actually, I planned Tucson trip just yes. for a day, specially to visit <laughs> the gallery, because I'm such a big fan of a few of the artists. Yes. It's like crazy. And now I'm fan of, I think, almost all of them, because <laughs> it's just... Do you, have a a, do you have a favorite or two that you want to yeah, shout out? They'll be listening. Of course. like I think I have already mentioned Jill Carver. Yes. Yeah, I know. Brilliant, just, right? It, it's, I think there's something really soothing yes. about the way she applies paint. Yes. I think it's, it's different. It's different because it's the same paint which other people use, but it's the way. It's coming from her heart. It's crazy yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. It just calms you down when you look at it, the way everything is placed, and it's not, it's no, it, there is no effort. Yeah. You know? Though she'll tell you there was a <laughs> an <laughs> immense amount of effort, I'm sure. Uh, there is, yeah, but, but, yeah, you know it's, what I, mean. I think it's just, she has this way of tapping into ephemerality of, mm. you know, the world. Yeah, Doubt the simplicity that. of things, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we all agree. Jill Carver, you're great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, there are others like I saw just Matt Smith stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 He's yeah. brilliant. And Mark Maggiore. Every yeah. day, all of these guys. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. And mm. do they make an impact to you in Australia because you see them on podcasts like this or the internet? I mean, I mean, because you're living in Australia, Get so it. you're surrounded. I'm sure there's some really great yeah. Australian painters, New Zealand painters as well, yeah. Aboriginal painters as yeah. well, right? Yeah, yeah. But actually, I think any kind of creative, you know, energy or any kind of painting or artwork influences me. It's not, I'm not, like, I don't just appreciate one kind of a kind of an artwork or effort. I just love any, I just love any kind of creativity. Yeah. So it just something or the other touches you and then you just take it in yes. and then you try to maybe put it in the way you communicate through yeah. your painting. Yeah. So it's not, yeah, it's not like very direct, but I think it's very, comes from the gut. Yeah. You just take it all in and then somewhere or the other it comes. Well, clearly you love nature. Yeah. Right. I yeah. mean, that's yeah. what your paintings are about. Absolutely. I, mean, I don't know if you do anything other than that. I mean, all the ones I've seen <laughs> pretty much, right. I mean, you do yeah. landscapes and things too, but it's, yeah. primarily 
birds, birds primarily. Birds and plants and trees yeah. and yeah, yeah, vines and flowers and all, all of that. You I know? wore this shirt for you, by the way. Oh, really? I did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you do these very colorful paintings, yeah. and a lot of them kind of have this tropical sensibilities. Yes. And yeah. I thought, oh, I think I'll just wear this for you. Yeah, yeah I, did. I think I, I think I love all the parrots, like Macau. Oh, yeah. And, no, yeah, like, and um, in South America or in Australia, they're very similar. The sizes are different. Right. The anatomy is a little bit different, but the behavior is very similar, and the way they make noises is very similar mm -hmm. so yeah like I, I i'm just very 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 inclined to painting macaws and yeah i can see why and, and that blue painting that was a was that a blue macaw uh, that well, is hyacinth macaw so hyacinth. hyacinth is a color yes it's a kind of blue so, yes okay and that yeah. is and that's an australian bird no, no, that's I don't South know. American. It's uh, okay. from Argentina. Interesting. And so now, did you have a live or a bird to go from? Or I have it? seen them uh, live, but yeah, I just uh, use stock photos, a lot of them. Then I do sketches yes. using them, and then I pick and choose, and I put my own thing together, the concept, whatever I want to, you know. So the background and right. uh, yeah, and what position I want the birds in. Yeah, I think that's yeah. one of the keys that I like about it, too, mm. is that... The positioning, yeah. especially on these ones that are close up, yeah. um, those really, there's something organic about mm. it. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's not just a bird. In fact, the one that's just feathers kind yeah. of really is, yeah. you know, very striking. It becomes yeah. modern art in, a, in an interesting way to me. Yeah, yeah. so uh, like the other one, the scarlet milonga one, which, yes. is, which has scarlet macaws, that one actually I did, I think it was my first painting of this year. So... It, it was just my state of mind at that time because I was going through this turmoil of should I resign or should I not? Should I continue with my engineering job or not? And, you know, I just decided. I just made that decision and I just wanted it to be really, really organic and confident, that mm -hmm. step, yes. and not have any doubts at all. So I think it just that flow or that, you know, confidence or that ease mm. I think I wanted to communicate it through that painting. So it's always whatever I'm going through, I try to put that in the body language of the bird, mm. if you know what I mean. Well, I think that's yeah. I think that happens for all painters. Mm. You know, yeah. if you're in a horrific mood or whatever, mm. depressed or whatever, you see it in the paintings, yeah. whether it's the color selection or the composite, whatever. Mm. And if you are happy and, you know, it shows yeah. through. Yeah. I mean, I can look at certain paintings there was a Fritz shoulder I looked at. It was so dark and powerful and painful uh, that I literally had a hard time looking at it. Oh, wow. And I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> because it was so emotionally yeah. charged. Yeah. And I thought, can I live with it? And I thought, not now. Mm. Not at mm. this moment. Because it has to yeah. somehow sync with your yes. state of mind and at what stage you are in your life, yes. right? So, yeah. yeah, I don't know what was going on then, but something yeah. was not, <laughs> he was not in a good, happy place. Creatively, mm. it was fantastic. Mm. So you clearly are in a happy place. Yeah. Things are clicking for you in yes. many, many yes. ways. And we're going to get to that because I think that's so interesting how you got to this point. Mm. But anyone who's listening to this can tell that's not an Australian accent. No, no, it's not. <laughs> so let's find out how a Indian yeah. comes to Australia. Yeah. So where did you grow up? So I grew up in, uh, the, it's a small town called Latur. Yes. Um, it's, it's like 40 minutes drive from our village, which is called Gorevadi, which is named after our last name. Or maybe our last name is after that Gorevadi village. Yes, which is Gore, her last name. Gore, is yeah. Last. So it's like Gorevadi. Yes. Wadi is like any village. Yes. So it's, yeah. So um, my family is from there, from the village. And is it a small village? Yeah, like small village in India is like 700, 800 people. It's like extremely small. That is extremely is small. Extremely small. Yeah. And almost 80% of the residents, uh, their last name is the same. Interesting. Yeah. So everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows everybody. And is some, everybody kind of related to everybody in a way? Kind of. Yes. Kind of. They are related and they do like different, they have different professions. Most of them are farmers. Mm. Yeah, and we were like, mm, uh, my grandfather was like the head of the village and mm. kind of, yeah, because he was very well educated. He he got his education in Pune, 
my father's father. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. what so, was he? Was he a? What did he do? Because oh, I know. Oh, so he he mm. he studied farming. Yeah, okay. Agriculture. Yeah. So, did and he get an actual degree? Uh, actually, he didn't. Yeah. Because uh, within a week, his uh, in his family there were seven deaths uh, due to plague. Oh yeah, yeah. What kind of so, plague? Um, it's it, it's just plague. Yeah, bluebonnet plague that's or what, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I have heard yes. from the stories. And he lost all of his sisters. He lost <gasps> uh, one of his younger brother, and his mom, and like seven people within wow. a week. And he got the um, telegram uh, to just come back. And then we, when he went back, yes, there was no way he could return back because there was literally no. Left. No support. Was no there support. anybody? Did yeah, there were people because he had a few stepsisters and things like that. So there were people, but he didn't have any brothers left. And wow. he was the only man who could take care of the farm. There were like 400 acres of land he had to take care of, you know. And he was not really a farmer, farmer guy. He, no. he might have gone into, you know, research or some, doing something yes. else. But yeah. He didn't. Ha- he couldn't. Yeah, he was so, pressed into what he had to do. Yeah, he had to go back. Did you know him? Yeah, yeah. I spent a long, long time with him. So he was um, here till two thousand seven, and then he passed on. Mm. Uh, he was ninety three. So I spent a lot of time with you him. You just wonder how you survive something like that. Yeah. I mean, so much trauma. Yeah, yeah. And he, he had a lot. Like, uh, our village has so much of history of, you know, uh, ducats and Mughals and this and that. And um, a lot of, you know, in different kind of influences. Yes. Uh, and they had three big ducats. So they, like, lost some three kgs of gold that's what we hear from yeah, stories right so yeah it was like um they they really beat my grandfather yes and he lost all his teeth uh, at a very young age oh my god and since then he was wearing like dentures yeah, den- yeah dentures. so with like a lot of such kind of stories like religion based fights and yes. things like that and yeah yeah <laughs> and then he had your father yes and uh, seven more children so he had eight eight, eight children eight four son and four daughters and your s- father became a physician right a uh, surgeon yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So that's that's a big jump from a village yeah. did a, did the other kids yeah, your father's so, uncle, your actually, ki- uh, brothers and sisters, did they do things like that as well? Because my grandfather was very well educated for the time. Yes. Uh, he knew the importance of education. Sure. So he didn't want any of his kids to get into farming. Yeah. So he made sure that all of his kids got education from big cities like Pune or, wow. you know. Yeah. So even primary education, they got in a small town called Barshi, which mm. was nearby. And then they all moved to Pune. And my grandmom, she lived in Pune. She wasn't living with my grandfather for a really long time. So when she she was around 40 till she was 75, she lived alone in Pune with all these kids without mm. any help and without any support. So she used to take care of everything like cleaning and cooking and banking and outdoor stuff and school. And, and they were all just going to school? Yeah, they were going educated. to school. Some of them were going, started going to college yeah. eventually, my older uncles and aunties. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So all of them got really good education. And yeah, my father decided he wanted to pursue maths like me and my brother. Yes. So he had that in him as well. But even he could not because his mom wanted him to become a doctor. Mm. Yeah. So and what would he wanted to do if he could? Your father? Um, some accounting kind of a yes profession. Yes, math. Something. Math. Yeah. yeah. And your mom? What What did she do? Uh, my ma. She um, she was a gynecologist. Yes. So she did did her uh, MBBS from um, Aurangabad. Have you heard about Aurangabad? Mm-hmm. It has a huge historical significance. Uh, so it's like um, we have these caves. Oh, I know exactly what that is. Really beautiful caves. Yes. And. Um, it's a Buddhism cave, yes. so they have carved yes. every bit N- of it. No, I know exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's and that's where she's from. Yeah, she's from Aurangabad. I'm born in Aurangabad. Yeah. yeah, and I studied in Aurangabad as well eventually. Oh, wow. And my grandmother, my mom's mom, she stays in Aurangabad. So my grandmom is also really well educated. Uh, my mom's mom. Yes. So after her high school, she did um, a TD, teacher's diploma, which yes. they could do at that time, two years of te- uh, like education. And then she used to teach geography, maths, and drawing. 
Yeah. Ah, interesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's the only <laughs> little, you know, link. Yeah. little link. <laughs> and that's your mother's mother. Mother's mother. Yeah. And what was it like to grow up with all those major artistic sculptures there? Ah, so basically, every year, twice, at least twice, um, we used to go to Aurangabad. Mm-hmm. So we used to go to Gorewadi, which was just 40 minutes from our place all the time, like every weekend. Mm-hmm. But Aurangabad only few times at my mom's mom's place. And my uncle and my grandmom, they used to take us to Elora and Ajanta Caves every time we visited them. Mm. Because it was important for them as well to, you know. Yeah, it's very spiritual too, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, not, the, uh, not just and, ours, but yeah. I mean, it's the whole, yeah. it's the whole packet, yeah. right? They have this Kailash temple, which is actually carved from top to bottom. Mm. So usually things are carved from I think the temples and all yes. are carved from bottom to yes. top, but it's like carved from top to bottom, and it's humongous, wow. like huge, uh, carved out of one single. I've rock. seen images of those things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow, yeah. that's interesting. It's Do you beautiful. think that affected you from a perspective of thinking of art? Yeah, absolutely. I think that because see, the thing is like my mom, her sisters, and her brother, all of them are really artistic. Mm. So in India, everybody knows how to do rangoli. Have you seen rangoli? I don't know. Um, it's a powder. It's a, Oh, yes, I know what it is. Yeah, it's a white powder, yes. and they add colors into it, yes. and then they just right, make... Right, like, almost a, like a sand diffi- painting. Yeah, sand painting, and yeah. it is difficult. It's not very easy, no, no, but very everybody hard. just can do it just yeah. like this, and they can just excel at it. Right. It's like everybody can do a can better you? job than you. Yeah, I can do it, like <laughs> everyone else, but I, I don't think I can even come closer, cl- even close to yes. my uncle or my uh-huh. aunties. And also the henna, mehendi. Yes. Everybody does like such intricate work, but yeah. it's so commonplace. Right. Everybody is artistic in a way. So for them, it was important to, you know, um, do this practical work. Like mm. every now and then, whenever I used to visit them, they used to have clay in the house, paints in the house, you know, everything, the drawing paper, craft paper. Yes. And we used to do it during summer holidays and Diwali holidays and things like that. And visiting all of these places, the caves and all, was part of it. It's like you have to be exposed to this beauty, you right. know, and you have to see, because this was like some 500 BC stuff. Oh, no, really it's, early. It's crazy. Yeah. Old. Yeah. yeah it's like and your people, really. I mean, yeah. genetically, it's your people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. it is. One yeah. of the carvers could have been somebody that was has your genetic code. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, very much <laughs> Never so. Thought, very possible. Thought of it like well, that. when you think about it, your family's from that area mm. and they didn't really move around. Yeah. At, yeah. at all. Yeah. So yeah. it's very it's more probable than not. Yeah. Quite Maybe. frankly. Yeah. Oh, that 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 <laughs> that is such a nice spiritual warmth I just got. <laughs> <laughs> That's true though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's I, I would be surprised if it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you as have always been interested in drawing, right? As drawing, a kid. Yeah, 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 since childhood. Like it wasn't I, I didn't know that I was interested or anything, but you know, when you have a, we uh, in India, because I studied in my mother tongue, everything, like till high school, I, w- I studied everything in mother tongue. Yeah. So for us, like electricity is Vidyut Dhara mm-hmm. and voltage is Vidyut Bhavan. It's like your mother tongue language, you mm-hmm. learn everything, science and everything. So uh, till fifth standard, only you have art class, one, one class per week, just mm. one hour of drawing or painting or something right. and after fifth fifth standard just study just just science so after fifth and grade after fifth grade yeah, yeah. so we, we call it standard yes. so great that's it so after fifth grade there is no art in your life like in academics <laughs> no like zero right. you don't have time for that because because you have to focus on your maths and science and so they marginalize it in the sense they embrace it through the sand paintings and the mm, henna and stuff. It's in every day. But the, everything else is, that's not a real job. That's not the profession. Yeah, you get in. You can't even think about that, right? Yeah, interesting. So, like, since childhood, like, uh, that's what my parents tell me, that I, I drew my first uh, recognizable turtle when I was, all like, around three or four or something yes. like that. And it was it was looking like exactly like a turtle. Yes. And it was an animal, which is for time. Yeah. yeah. So... That's like it started really early, and I used to just scribble around everywhere. All my notebooks, even books, sometimes textbooks, yes. everything 
had something. Animals on it. Yeah, animals or birds right. or yeah, t- sometimes teachers or friends. Uh-huh. And, yeah, I was interested in caricature and cartoon and everything. Yes. Everything. Anything I used to see, I wanted to try it. Yes. Even now, like whenever I see some style, I want to try that style in my subject matter. Right. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not a person who likes to stick to a particular style. Yes. It comes out of my mood. So, yes. yeah, yeah. If I yeah, and you're also still young in your career and, you know, figuring out who who you are. I mean, I know you figured it out, yeah, but, but that will continue. I mean, some of your bird paintings, I can see the backgrounds are much more abstract. Yeah. Than, yeah. Why to confine, you know, no. yourself? Who? Like, w- w- for what? For yeah. whom? <laughs> I, yeah, I'm very clear about that, that, like, I paint for myself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and well, that's, that, that's it. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I know how to earn money through other professions, so that's not what I'm here for. I just right. want to spend as much time with each piece I can yes. and make the best like out uh-huh. of it, the experience you know because i have memories when i paint that painting yes. if it has gone for a week or three weeks or four weeks doesn't matter but i have very strong memories and somehow i don't know there is a smell or what i was hearing and those memories come back again when i listen to the same podcast yes it's really strange. and if you look no it's not yeah. actually i get it and if you look at the painting do you bring does it bring back the other stuff too yeah yeah, yeah interesting. absolutely All, everything what happened during that week yeah. or month yeah it just yeah you're really in touch with your creative side mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah for sure 100 <laughs> percent. and so when you go to high school mm-hmm. everyone's saying well you're you're drawing all the time yes but yes. this is of no use yeah so they want you to become your parents are both physicians right yeah like surgeons yeah in a way, both. so not only physicians are at a higher level of mm. intensity right mm-hmm. and you have how many brothers and sisters just one more brother yeah and he wasn't he wasn't into arts or anything yes. yeah he's a very computer guy yes yeah so but see my parents never actually they never ever said to us that okay study 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 or, because that is very indian yes i know in india every all parents will take stress more than their kids will yeah. and they'll study more than their kids will it's it's very common and then they'll pressurize the kids and things like that my parents somehow never asked both of us to study study or go back to your room and study or yeah. things like that if i'm scribbling they just let us do it yes. if i'm doing something they just it's okay she'll figure it out yeah She'll do it. Like they somehow had that kind of a, not faith, but maybe the experience of their lives mm-hmm. was telling them to let them do whatever they're doing. Right. But suddenly when it came to <laughs> me going in after high school, there is, uh, we have 11th and 12th standard, right. which is where you select, which yeah, is when you, you lock, right. whether you want science, science or, right. you know, yeah. things like that. This is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Correct. Correct. Okay. At that time, suddenly my father was like, you need to be a doctor. <laughs> huh? And you need huh? to. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, okay. I thought I can do it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, during those two years, almost three of my sisters were doing um, cousin sisters. So yes. we had 20 brothers and sisters, cousins in, yeah. on my father's side and yeah. nine on my mother's side. And are they treated like brothers and sisters? Like more than that. It's like... So the cousins are... Li- actual brothers and sisters. So, okay. So there is no So you said you had one brother, but in reality you had how many? 20? 15, 15 Fif- brothers on... Okay, ah, total like 7 plus 15, 22 yeah. brothers in total yeah, and six sisters. Yeah. yeah. And so all of those individuals, mm-hmm. they're probably fairly close in age somewhere along yeah, the... Yeah, there are groups. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so what so were the all they doing? What, what were... Uh, doctor, like doctor, 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 mechanical 75, engineer. 75% percent of them are uh, medical professionals. And the other 25%? Like, um, some of them are engineers. Yes. And just there is one lawyer. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And that's it, actually. Yeah. And you. And me, yeah. I'm an engineer. I'm the only engineer girl in the family. Yeah. Yeah. All the other girls are doctors. So on that 11th and 12th year, when your father's saying, you'll be a doctor, Mm -hmm. and you say, no, I'm going to go into engineering? No, I could not talk to him. So I used to torture my mom (laughs) all the time. I I can't do this. And then, because what happened is I got firsthand information from my sisters that you have to yeah. go into these rooms and cut people open yeah and all that and stuff. it's like first year of your medic medical you know right. uh, you have to do it like you have right. to cut people it's the part of anatomy 
Yeah, you know, I remember. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> having like, done it, <laughs> mm, nah, I can't do that. Like, I just can't because I had gone through it throughout my life because my parents had their hospital, yes. and the top floor was our home. Ah, so I have heard all the labor pains and all the accident patients, yeah. and I have seen. Sometimes I've seen emergency yeah, cases traumatized you probably completely. I think I can't see blood. I can't. Yeah, you're traumatized. Yeah, I get nauseated i get dizzy everything yeah. everything happens so yeah i just couldn't do it like physically i couldn't do it like yeah. i wasn't even talking about mental capacity or hard work or things like yeah, that no. wasn't that was out of the way right <laughs> just yeah physically i could not yeah. do something like that and i, I was it. trying to tell my mom when because they never told me the bad side of it right it's my cousins my sisters who told me everything that yeah that is that is what you have to do and this is the patient <laughs> i saw today this is it like things like that and then it started to like mm, i yeah. shouldn't have been yeah so my that those two years i still played safe i chose there is like pcmb so physics chemistry maths and biology yeah so i took all four instead of just taking pcb right so i put M in there, maths yeah. in there. So you know, still I have, I had that opportunity. You, were, you knew you needed an option out. Yeah, but it's really hard, you know, because when you take four of them, and you have to study all of them. Oh no, it's, I'm it's sure really you were just hard. getting killed. Yeah, because in biology you have zoology and botany, yeah. and in maths you have two maths, and right. in chemistry you have organic and all. So. Yeah. And it's this like, is 17 and 18 year old time frame? No, it's right. earlier than that because I studied in my mother tongue. It's really early education. Everything happens really So early. what age would you have been? So I, I was already in my do, doing my engineering first year when I was 17. So That's this for was college, you mean? Co college, yeah. proper degree college. Yeah. yeah. So this was like 15 and a half, 16 and a half, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And so you so. talk to your mother and say, I cannot do this. And then she says, okay, go into mechanical engineering, or what did she no, say? No, she didn't say anything. Yeah. She didn't give me any clues or cues. Yeah. She just said, just do everything, just study, just right. focus on your studies. And whenever I used to do little, mm, 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 I don't want to, mm, my father used to get angry around that time. And yeah, he yeah. used to say, you don't know what life is and what will. That's what all coming to... from his father, too, I bet. Maybe I don't know. Seven brothers and sisters die at one time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I can only imagine the pressure that came down on him. Yeah. You know, and there were what seven of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's yeah. I mean. Yeah, all of them were independent. They were doing their own things. I don't think there was a pressure. I think it was more societal at that point. Yeah. Because well, it that's was, part of it. Yeah, right? because it was coming to that point where there was a decision which had had to be made. Uh, oh yeah, and my brother is three years older to me. Yes. And he didn't even care about my father's opinion, and he just went into engineering. So he just took PCM, yeah, and that's it. And it broke. I think it broke my father's heart a little. Because he bit. didn't want to go into medicine. He was very clear about maths and computer, and yeah, but your so dad was, was uh, mad because he didn't. He only became a computer yeah, engineer. Yeah, and he didn't even <laughs> ask. He didn't even ask him. Yeah. So I think that's that was maybe the anger coming on. I don't yeah. know what. I don't want to. Yeah. yeah uh, he they did whatever they could do the best. Yes. And then later he really supported me to go to uh, the U.S. for mm. doing my masters. So, so when I was in India, when I did my engineering, yes. I was really happy, and I was having too much fun mm. and not really good grades in my first year. <laughs> and then I got some bashing from my uncle who supported me. You yeah. know, to pursue engineering and then he said you have to focus and you <laughs> know because you you literally ran out of the house and you were yeah. such a rebel to become an engineer now you have to really prove yourself you can't just <laughs> take it easy and can't just enjoy and are you still drawing and things at this time absolutely yeah so completely. i was drawing all the time Mostly was part of you going i really want to be an artist i don't want to do this no actually because what happened is i struggled so much to become an engineer yes I somehow loved my engineering stuff. Yeah, and you were focused. I it. was focused. Yeah. And then once I got that bashing from my uncle from second year, I was really, really focused. Yeah. And I, I, I scored a lot. I was amongst the top five and yeah. things like that. And <laughs> I really yeah, started enjoying it. And especially in the third year, the real uh, curriculum starts. So yeah. like really interesting topics, which are like super specialization topics start yeah. uh, in third year, second semester. So um, electromagnetic engineering and things like that, yeah. m uh, control systems. Right. So I was more interested in that. That's what I realized because first two years are very generic. Right. You have a lot of stuff. You have mechanical and electrical. You can see applications for your life, basically. Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah. You can see the actual antennas and what they do and, the, right. you know, communication engineering, how it is implemented in real life. And, and so what did you get your degree in? 
Uh, so I did my bachelor's in electronics and telecommunications. Uh-huh. And during third year of my engineering, in my family, there was a big... So all of the kids who did engineering, they uh, went... They came to the America. US. They came to America yeah, to, get to pursue masters. masters. Yeah. yeah. So that was like a thing in my family, right. right? So my brother was already studying in University of Southern California here. My brother, like who? Yes. Yeah. So when I got a, so in third year, I started preparing for TOEFL and GRE and all these things, and uh, I already had a job in hand in third year itself. So before graduating, so it's a four-year mm-hmm. degree course. So when I got my job, I really wanted to do the job and, you know, start earning money in India. And that's when my father stepped in and he's like, no, you're not doing your job. <laughs> you're studying further and you're, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah, then <laughs> I had to apply to the university. So then I applied and I got admitted into Illinois Institute of Technology, Chicago. Yes. Yeah. And, and in 2009, I came to America. And you got a master's in? A uh, master's in electrical engineering and yes. specializing in communication system design engineering. And that's more male-dominated field, would you say? Yes. Yes. Right, like yes. 80% maybe? Uh, 75? In U.S., yeah. I will say 75% male. Yeah. In Australia, 99%, I would say. Yeah. Male. yeah. No female engineers. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, not what, hands-on. So what was... Did that bother you or was that problematic for in you at all? In the U.S., it didn't bother me too much because there were still a lot of um, girls and yeah. a lot of women I could see in the uh, office area. Um, and actually, some of my guides were, you know, who inspired me here in when I was working for Alcatel Lucent mm-hmm. in Virginia. So um, some of my um, influences were girls and most of them were men yeah. because that's the that's the ratio. Yeah, right. Um, it, I don't think at that time it bothered me at all mm. because I that wasn't my focus. Right. So I just wanted to learn, you know, yeah. hook or crook. I just wanted to learn as much as I can. That is another thing which comes from grand, my grandparents and my uncles and aunties. They are addicted. They are like workaholics, yes. including my parents. So I w- <laughs> we are taught like since childhood that work is your life and yes. you have to work like, you know, uh, at least... 10 to 18 hours a day, yeah. that should be your focus. Yeah, yeah, You know, learning and working and hard work and right. all, all those things. So that's what I was doing there, working on weekends, yeah. supporting Apple and Samsung people, <laughs> to, to, trying to use Sprint Network for their testing and things like that. At that time, like we used to um, get to see all the devices um, in the black box yes, because Apple doesn't want to disclose their design before launching the product. So these would be like the iPhones and yeah, iPads and yeah, things like that? Yeah, things like that. So we, we are like uh, setting up the network for their conditions, whatever they want to test and things like that. Mm. So we are making changes to the network according to their... So I, I was working in a lab, Sprint Lab in Virginia, uh, mm. Reston. So you got a you got a job right out of right right, right out, out of. of so I, I did this thesis with um, uh, Dr. Suresh Borkar, who was the toughest guy in the university, and nobody wanted to work under him right. with him. And, and you said, <laughs> "I've got my dad. This is no problem. <laughs> yeah. I can handle this guy." Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. Actually, my my <laughs> brother guided me a little bit. He said, "Doesn't matter what is his research in," and yeah. I said, "He's the only one who is getting into 4G LTE stuff." Right. Um, nobody else is, and all of the other people are working on devices and hardware and things right. like that. So he said, "Do that. Like, don't <laughs> don't worry about internships. Don't worry about earning thirty bucks or twenty bucks per hour in Motorola or Nokia or you know, because in Chicago area there are a lot of chances for you to opportunities for you to do internship right. in Naperville and you know all those universities are there, big companies, telecom companies. So he was very clear: don't go behind money because this." Research is going to get you the best job you could get right. after graduating. And out of like six of us in the group, only I ended up getting job in the niche I studied in. Mm. Everybody else had to change their fields. It was that bad, the situation. Yeah. 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 And so you worked for this guy as an internship for yeah, a year? Uh, or? As an, a research assistant. Yes, uh, for how for long? For nine months. Yeah. 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 It was the best time I had. Uh-huh. He was so good. He. Yeah. 
it doesn't matter you know some people just don't like to smile maybe but yeah. that doesn't make them <laughs> bad people <laughs> i enjoyed it a lot he guided me really well and yeah. he introduced me to to the core things of telecommunication engineering you know the practical things right. what the industry standard uses so it's the 3gpp standards right. which are used for your 2g 3g 4g 5g all the technologies and he and the language which is in that standard is very intricate and difficult to understand for people even when they are working for tens of years but yes. he made it really easy for me because he grilled <laughs> me yeah. completely to <laughs> dig deeper into all those you know different uh, ts like different what years what year was this that you did this that this was 2010 10 uh, 2010 yeah, so yeah. 12 years ago 12 years ago yeah so you get through that and then you get your job with is it with sprint with alcatel lucent uh, yeah, so lucent. alcatel lucent is the vendor for sprint it was the vendor yeah. for sprint Alcatel Lucent is gone. Sprint is gone now. Yeah. <laughs> so and then how long did you do that? Ah, uh, three years. Three, three years. Three years and day in, yeah. day out. And that was in Virginia? Night. That was in Virginia. And uh, we had a wonderful team of 23 people. Yes. I was the youngest. Uh, when I joined, I was the second girl in the group. Mm. The other lady was, um, she was very, uh, she had like 25 years of experience and she was really good. Mm. So, uh, but later we had a lot of girls joining in. Mm. Uh, but i was the youngest and everybody else was really knowledgeable so i used to just sit yeah. with them and yeah you're absorbing them. absorbing yes a lot of draw- drawings actually <laughs> of them uh, no of the communication system uh-huh. systems i was studying <laughs> but when when you say drawing do you actually mean physically drawing yeah, with your hands yeah physically drawing did on that, the paper did that bring that sense of creativity to you that you've uh, had as a child actually to be frank in those three years i did not draw You were so focused. At all. At all. Like yeah. during my master's, I did. Yeah. I remember drawing my university building, the trees around the campus, yes. people, some caricatures. I, I used to draw a lot, but not during those three years. Yeah, because you're working so constantly. I was so tired. Yeah. I was so tired. Like I used to go <laughs> home at eight, yeah. have a banana or a muffin or something and go to bed. And I was staying alone. No TV, nothing. Just go to bed, get up, go to work. Do it again. That's it. Like even weekends, it was crazy. Your dad would be so happy. Yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell them I was no, doing that. No, he doesn't have it's to. Just he like, he knows you're going to do it. That's what you do. It's not. I don't think it's appreciated. Like, or it's it's a matter of it's not anything extraordinary for them because I think in India that is the way. Yeah. People work most of them. Yeah, and so you finished this three years. Does it close down? Is that why you leave? No. No, 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 you just found something else. Yeah, so uh, in 2012, I uh, in December I got married mm. in India. So I knew my um, husband, now husband, uh, since 2004. Mm. Uh, back in Aurangabad in engineering. Uh-huh. So he was two years senior to me. So yeah, I knew him since forever and uh, he was in UK, then he went to New Zealand. I was in US. Yes. And then um, he came from UK to US to propose to me. Yes. And with all our friends, there were a lot of friends we had in US, common friends, his childhood friends were in US with me. Mm. So it's it's it was like a lot of connections. And one of my paintings in, is inspired from uh, the whole situation we had. It's called mm. Secret of Staying in Love. <laughs> yeah. And Yeah, because like, you've known him forever. And I think it's really important for staying in love that you know the people he knows or your partner knows and they know your people mm. and it's not just family but it's friends and everything it's right. the warmth and the you right. know it's uh, i think that's the secret <laughs> it's the whole um, um, environment it's not just you and me it's not just two and people. so you get married in 2012 2012 december yeah yeah in india we got married three times so one one time with in with his traditional thing one yeah. time with mine and one time in US for your Be- friends here yeah no actually the legal thing because we oh, forgot okay. to do the legal papers in yeah. india we just did the celebration for like few weeks yeah uh-huh. <laughs> and there was no paperwork oh, it yeah. was just celebration and dance and singing and like just right. time pass <laughs> right and no just a party uh, and no legal no legalities right. So and you can't apply for um, any kind of Australian permanent residency or anything. Yes. Without having a legal document. And he was working in Australia. At that time, he was working in New Zealand, and I was in US. Yes. So he flew to US specially to get married in right. Fairfax County. So we we went to the right <laughs> county office and did all the things, 
and then he went back to New Zealand and applied for her Australian permanent residency. I wasn't ready to move to New Zealand because I was too uh, high on my job and my career and everything. And New Zealand is the last place you want to be if you want to do 4G LTE at that time. I got it. Because they were still with 3G and the 4G was all, you know, like they were taking it from other countries. So right. the expertise were coming um, in, doing their thing, going back. So it wasn't, right. nothing was happening in New Zealand. There were not many yeah. opportunities at all. So uh, I was like, yeah, Australia, maybe, uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. but no, New Zealand, yeah. yeah. And for him, it was impossible to come here, as you know, for Chinese or Indian passport holders. It's really difficult if you haven't studied here yes. to get a job here. Got it. So he came here, he got, he had 70 interviews. He cracked almost 50, but they could not do his H1 because who, who will spend that much amount on you and wait for six months because yeah. of all those, you know, gates, April and October and Right. You have to wait for different gates to cross to start your job because yes. that's when the H1 kicks in. It's it's really common. I don't want you to get into So it. <laughs> he goes to Australia and you follow back. You follow yes, there. Yes, so, so I was, at that time, I was really happy to go uh, there because we had Australian permanent residency. Mm. And I, I always felt that was lacking here for me because here then you have to stick to your STEM, right? STEM degree. Mm. which is your science right. yeah right like, yeah which is your whatever degree you have studied in you have to work in that period period that's it you can't even switch a little bit i can't even be a physicist in right. a way you know so i felt like and also you have to every 3 years you have to go and do your h1 stamping and things like that yes and australia was somehow exciting for me really exciting for me because of what i had heard like the whole wildlife and the beaches and the weather, and it was all very inviting. Yes, and me. at this point, had you even considered art? No. Yeah, okay. So you're But I always had this thing in mind that whenever I'll get a week or a month or a few months, the first thing I'm going to do is go to an art supply store. Yes. And buy whatever I want to buy, <laughs> and then, you know, start. Right. Start with my creative journey. I always had that thing, but... The thing is, like, it was like at the back of my mind. It wasn't actively functional. Yeah. So literally, when I took my flight, I think I started thinking about yes. that. You know, the last flight from LA to Melbourne. Then I started thinking, oh, what should I do now? Because I don't have a job. So okay, I'll apply for jobs. Yes. But yeah. But he had a job. He had a job. Yeah. And so, where were you living, or are living, same place now? Melbourne. Oh, you're in Melbourne. Melbourne, but it all it actually shattered all my expectations, which I had from Australia because it's tremendously cold. Yes. It's really cold. And the infrastructure <laughs> is, doesn't support it. Ah. Unlike here, because here all the homes have heating and cooling. Right. And universities have that. Buses and trains are well equ equipped, everything. There they feel it's not that cold. It doesn't freeze. So, you know, <laughs> they don't need heater. No, they need it because it can drop to <laughs> two or five degrees right. and it's still cold. Right. And it was miserable. Like, it was really cold. <laughs> but uh, I think we just... We just focused on the cafe culture, and Melbourne is a beautiful city. Yeah, everyone I've heard says yeah. it's just like the best. And with art and um, yeah, stuff, it's really fantastic, good. right? Uh, like amazing artists, and there are art galleries, and the museum there is yeah. really beautiful. National Gallery NGV uh, of Victoria, it's it's beautiful. Yeah, so we used to go there every weekend when I didn't have a job. Every now and then, yeah. yeah. But you got a pretty good job right off the bat right yes it was in was two months time so with uh, in those two months my brother got married in india so i flew to india and stayed yeah. with him for a month and enjoyed my time the break as soon as i came back within a week i got a really good job so i got a job in nbn national broadband network australia so it's mm -hmm. a government owned company right and their goal was to uh, provide um, broadband internet service to 8 million homes in australia mm. that was the initial goal but they ended up Extended, extending it to 24 million homes. Mm. So it was a really beautiful goal. Mm. And a lot of students in all across American universities, they did their research in NBN's uh, uh, like dream mm -hmm. in a way because it was such a challenging endeavor because of the um, terrain of the country. It's so weirdly placed and the population is so scarce right. that they can't afford to put towers or fiber or anything so how can they achieve it? Because every home is like 100 miles from each other, right. sometimes 50. So it's like, it's really challenging. And the towns and small villages have like 10 people or 15 people. And you can't just place a million dollar 
tower for them. Yeah, so how do you do that? So they had an idea, right? So they spend a lot of money, taxpayers' money, which is okay. Uh, but they implemented the network using five different technologies. So fiber to the node, fiber to the curb, different kind of fiber to the something. Yes. And they use their copper network, which is their cable connection yes. network. So it's called HFC, so hybrid fiber copper. So they use the cable network till the home and then they use tiny bit of fiber. So, so, it, so they used the combination of it. Then they used 4G LTE, wireless technology, to provide Ne um, internet broadband to remote places like small towns where mm. there is very low population and mm. they can't afford to put fiber all the way right. to the home and then they launched two satellites sky masters especially for areas where it's just impossible to even place towers were you involved city. in the satellite launching stuff too? kind of uh, n not involved in the launching uh, launches happened here yes. <laughs> but yeah um, just like in the design process and the uh, studying process and things mm. like that yeah, yeah yeah some kind of a uh, it was a long thing uh, I, I i was with them for four years so i was but majorly focused on 4g lte part of it but i was in touch with skymaster stuff a tiny bit yeah but you and you ended up getting some kind of award didn't you yeah that was later so that was after that i got a job in brisbane right so then we moved to our dream place where we are now and we got and where is Bis have. brisbane so brisbane in a, is in a state of queensland yes have you heard about great barrier reef of course of course yeah. you have it's yeah. the, it's the biggest rainforest yeah. underwater right yeah so uh, it's just brisbane is just um, around 200 miles south of where Great Barrier Reef starts. Mm. So Great Barrier Reef um, stretches for another 3,000 Yes, miles. very long. Yeah. So Brisbane But it's small, is, right? It's relatively small, Brisbane? A small place? Yeah. No, it's a big city, actually. How, how it's big? It's a major city. Uh, I don't know the population. Apparently, the population is same as my small town, Latur, <laughs> but uh, back, back home, um, which is, I think, 25 million or something. I don't know. Yeah, is it too much? Yeah, way too much. I don't know. Yeah, Australia, uh, Sydney probably is your biggest. The total population is 25 million. Yeah, maybe. exactly. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Melbourne's about it's a It's one million. of the big cities. See, these are the four big cities, right? Um, you have Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, and Perth. Yeah, so it might be a million people maybe. Yeah, but it's bigger than Perth. Yeah, I don't think. And it's yeah. really widespread. Yes. It's it's actually largest in the area, I even see. compared to Sydney. It's really like spread out kind of a. And so you got a job there. Yeah, so I got a job in mining there, in coal mining. mines. In yeah. gold mine? Coal, coal, coal. Coal mines. Now that's a huge jump. Yeah, so... Why? <laughs> so what happened is, first of all, I wanted a job in Brisbane. Second thing was... Because you just wanted to live next to the Great Barrier Reef? No, I was. I wanted the weather conditions to be... You wanted it warm. Nice and tropical. Yeah, you were tired of cold. Okay. Yeah, I wanted the warm rain, you know. <laughs> and nice and right. sunny weather throughout the year. That was something mm -hmm. which we I, I, I grew up, you know, in that like yes. weather condition. So that was good for, for my skin and for my jeans and for everything. Yeah, right? I got it. And so uh, we were planning to move to Singapore. We were so desperate to just move somewhere where there is sun. Warm. Yeah, okay. yeah warmth. So then, <laughs> yeah, we, as soon as I got the job in Brisbane, we moved there. Uh, the job was fantastic. It was like the most challenging and... Um, so it was a position of solution architect, uh, and I had to design from scratch. They they hadn't even hired my manager at that time, and my manager's manager. So it was like a fresh project yes. for which they just wanted to do a one-month study, whether it's even feasible to do the budgeting for the project. So it was one of the coal mines in that Bowen Basin area, and they wanted to make it autonomous. Mm. So all these... Eight meter high trucks. Imagine three story building, right. and that's a truck, one truck. Yeah. And they wanted to make eighty eight of such trucks driverless. Yeah. And they wanted an extremely reliable network, wireless network. Yes, they you have to. Yeah, one goes down, you're screwed. That's it. If one goes down, the others it kills the others because yeah. it has the bubble effect for yeah. safety and yeah things like that. So they <laughs> wanted a really reliable network. And guess what? There are not many 4G LTE experts in Australia, the original <laughs> ones who have hands-on worked on, you know, the core of it. Like yeah, it goes back to this guy that you did your internship Absolutely. under. Absolutely, and the job, yeah. which I did here, which yeah. was pretty cool as well, where I learned so much. So it was such an easy thing. Like, you know, <laughs> uh, they just picked me. Like, it didn't even take them 15 minutes. 
to pick me. It was I'm like, sure. It was a 15 minute interview and they're like, we're doing your flights and relocation, <laughs> every, everything. Is your husband all right? And I'm yeah. like, my husband works from home. He's okay to move yeah. anywhere in the world with me. So that's not an issue. And he came with me and we just moved there. And it was the best job uh, for, we. it took us few years, two years to finish the project, which is a big achievement for one mine because some of the mines in Western Australia, Perth, it took them six years. Mm. And there was a lot of resistance from that side uh, around our project because they were a bit shattered that team of like 60 people there working for six years, it took them to implement their 4GLT network and it costed them three times more for a smaller mine than us. And how many people worked on your project? Five. Yeah, five. Technical of people, five technical yeah. people and two uh, lead leaders, like managers. So I was leading the whole team from technical point of view. Yes. And all guys. <laughs> all like six three, yeah. <laughs> or taller, <laughs> yeah. And but it was lovely. They were really good, respectful. I I had a lovely time with them, yeah. and it was a very open-minded group of you know people, and and it was the best time. I think it was. Um, all of my jobs have taught me something, but that was the most challenging one because you know you fly to the mine site and you do all the survey and you check the sites right. where the towers should be placed, and it's it's a very different kind of. Um, uh, you know, engineering challenges. So I was very happy that I was getting that opportunity because after this, your cellular sprint kind of thing, I had the NBN broadband, which is fixed wireless. And then mm -hmm. I had private LTE network, which is owned by the mine company, right. BHP. Yeah, so they owned that tiny private LTE network and you have the whole autonomy to explore and try do and do whatever you want, you know. Trust the pressure though, because you got to get it done because you're talking about million, each one of those vehicles is what, probably a yeah. couple million dollars, right? Yeah, the right? whole project was, um, uh, the whole project, just the LTE network, yes. 4G LTE network was more than $60 million. Just for the network? Just for the network. Wow. So it was a humongous project. Yeah. And I take it you got it to work. Uh -huh. You got it to work. You yes, made yes, it work where they could use where they and could that, do it. That's why the nomination and the award and yeah. Like well, let's that. let's talk about the nomination. What was that for? Uh, what was <laughs> what was the award? Yeah, so the award was like woman um, in uh, engineering. Yes. Uh, for an innovation, some kind of an innovation. Um, so excellence in you know it's, it has a it has yes. a long name. So it was by government. So it's a Minerals Council of Australia uh, government con council uh, who does all of this. So BHP nominated me yes. uh, from the state of Queensland. And uh, there is from each state, there will be one person uh, which who will be nominated. And um, I was amongst the uh, five finalists. And I was again the youngest, and I didn't get the award. But yeah, it was it was but really were, nice. Yeah, but you were put up for it as one of the wo women of the week, of the year, right? Of the year, yeah, 2020. Yeah, 2020. The, yeah. yeah and, and, and that was in 2020. 20. It was really funny because I had a I had this really high risk pregnancy, and I had a <laughs> few really emergency episodes. So maybe you know that grade no. four placenta previa. Oh yes, grade, I know exactly. I what had that grade is. four placenta previa, and yeah. I had a few bleeding episodes and yeah. things like that. So it was 36th week. We took an ambulance because, yeah, everything was uh, messed up. <laughs> and we went to the hospital, and I'm sitting there in my bed. Yes. Five days of observ under observation, and I get a call from my manager that, hey, Priya, you know, uh, we really value and appreciate what you have contributed for this project because to make it successful, and we want, we would like to nominate you. And I, I was like, Oh my God, I didn't even tell him that this had happened right. because it was Friday evening and yes. I thought I, I should be out of it by Monday and can work right. from home. So I didn't tell <laughs> him. And then I told him and he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then they had to write up like a lot of stuff. There was a questionnaire. It was a long process for them to apply right. for that nomination. Correct. Yeah. So they went through everything. Uh, we rechecked it in a few days and then we, they, they submitted it and it got selected and yeah, and then there was uh, virtual awards because of 2020. It yes. wasn't uh, in Canberra, where the government body lives, the right. MCA council. Yeah, so it was all virtual. So, so 2020, you get the uh, nominated for the war, you make it to the finalist, and finalists. you have a baby. Yes, I have a baby, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so at some point, the art comes back. Oh, the art came back um, actually when I moved to Melbourne. 
So when you when you did get to Melbourne, you were thinking about when you flew flew over. I'm going to start buying the stuff. Correct. And because I'm going to start working. I got working. that two months of break, and the first yeah. thing I did is I went to Art Shed, which is the art supply store. Yes. So I went there. I bought like acrylic paints. Yes. I bought oil paints. Yes. I bought a lot of brushes. I bought some color pencils and like a lot of mediums because I didn't know what I wanted right. to explore because before that it was just a graphite pencil, right? Yes. That's it. That's all I had explored. So I got all of this stuff, went back home, Googled how to uh, paint a seascape. <laughs> <laughs> Some things popped up. So that's yes. how I got introduced to Andrew Tischler's uh, tutorials, yes. who is the this Aussie artist who moved to uh, New Zealand later. Um, and then that's how I got um, Graham, Graham Stevenson, uh, who was uh, another Australian artist, who popped in some American artist, Lisa uh, Klauf, her last name, it's difficult to pronounce, yes. I don't know how to pronounce. So I got uh, her channel, Lakri Fine Art, so that's it. I just followed them one after the other, I painted some like 15 seascapes in two days. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> and I didn't even know about the canvas and things. So what I had bought is I asked the store guy and he said, you can just buy this uh, book, For, yeah. which has canvas paper on it. And it was so bad because it, it had like really huge tooth. Yes. Um, and the paint was not flowing at yes. all, especially with acrylic. So it was a struggle. But within two days, I just felt I'm getting a grip of it. And, and then uh, I made another trip. I bought an easel. <laughs> in yes. the second trip because I was using table and things right. and making my right. own easel yeah and then I, I thought like maybe oils and yes. from third day I was just stuck with oils and I, I started painting every weekend and when I got it got the job for first six months I was kind of depressed because nobody was working from US point of view in Australia mm. It's like nine to four. Yes. And at four o'clock, your manager will be standing beside you and he'll be like, go home. What are you doing here? Right. You're making others feel bad. So you have to go home. Uh -huh. And I just couldn't bear that. Like, I, I just couldn't accept that. Yes. And for six months, I was just telling my husband, I did a big mistake. My career is done. This is like nobody works here. Nobody wants to learn here. And <laughs> so easy. Everything is like so relaxed. And he's like, that's the culture. Live life. Start living life. You know, right. explore other things. Because he used to play cricket and tennis on weekends. And because he was in New Zealand, which is more laid back country yes. than Australia. So he was used to it. And then it hit me. And after going back home, after having dinner, I used to paint. On weekends, I got the whole weekend to paint, which is a big, you know, so yeah. you would get off at four. You would paint till ten o'clock at night. Up sometimes, after that. Twelve. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sometimes just after that. Two. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you just took it intensely. Absolutely yeah. intensely because because it was like you know maybe it was the lifelong drive or something which I wasn't even aware of that I wanted to do it. Yes. But because it was you are so brainwashed, Mark. You're so brainwashed. That's what you realize. I, I think it takes a long time to realize that, you know, that, okay, maybe actually you loved engineering, but maybe not. Maybe it was cultivated love or I don't know. Even I, I, I don't even, I haven't figured it out even yet, but I used to enjoy doing my maths and my engineering job and right. everything. But sometimes I feel maybe I would, if I would have done anything, I would have enjoyed it. Yes. Maybe it was just the conditioning. Yes, sir. I'm sure it was, actually. And maybe art was the only thing which was there since I was born. Maybe it was just there. And, were you, and you were having fun, I'm sure, when you were... Uh, it was like, more than me, my husband was going crazy. Like He's like, how can you paint exactly like the way that guy has painted? <laughs> like, I don't know. He, he just He's just using that knife. I went to the store and bought that exact knife. I was so particular. I was using the exact brush, yeah. exact paints, exact knife, everything. And then, I don't know, it was turning out one after the other. It was like nice paintings and yeah, landscapes and ski seascapes I was interested in initially. Um, because with the paintbrush, I was still scared of doing intricate work. Mm. So I was more comfortable doing a bit abstract, uh, like bit, yeah, gestural work or, mm -hmm. you know, a bit expressionistic kind of a thing. Um, so animals and fur and feathers, I was still comfortable with just the pencil. So I was... Um, using these Faber-Castell polychromos and things like that, these color pencils for doing that. I wasn't still confident to do, paint. do painting. with. Uh, and this was all d happening at Melbourne? Yes, yes, all of this is happening in Melbourne and all the weekends we are doing this. And 
Did you start um, saying, well, maybe I can sell some of these? No, I did not. Yeah, that never even <laughs> entered your mind. At no. That. It was literally just for you. Just for And this me. is what I have to that's do. That's it. That's it. And this is just, you know, this is the hobby or the passion or something, right. you know, it's a change. This yeah. is a change. This from, is not a job. No, no. Yeah. And I remember almost in 20... Um, 15 after one year one and a half one years one of my college friends from india she was um, in brisbane and she came to visit us in melbourne and she used to paint with acrylics and she saw my paintings and she's like are you crazy you need to have your own website you at least have to have your insta account right and because some of my colleagues and friends they used to tell me also that you have to have some social media presence and things like that it's, it's pretty good you know what you're doing and it's just to yeah, get your confidence up and things like that. And I didn't do it. One of my friends created an account and then I started uploading things and it was okay. It wasn't anything, you know, um, viral or anything. And um, around 2016, I came across this uh, online gallery, Blue Thumb Online Gallery, which is the biggest online gallery in Australia. What's it called? Blue Thumb. Blue so Thumb. It's like okay. they have a blue fingerprint as yes. their logo. Yeah. And they are really good. So uh, they really support the artists genuinely. And um, you just apply for it to be on the platform. Right. And then you create your profile and you upload your artwork and then that's it. So I did that in 2016, two years after I started doing this. And almost immediately one of the paintings got sold. One of my first um, serious oil painting with animals in mm. it. And what, 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 yeah, what were the, were the uh, birds? A bird and an animal. So yeah. uh, uh, that was my first painting. And what in the was the thought? What did you think when you saw that? <sighs> it was like as unbelievable as this is today for yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. a mind blower. It was a mind blower. I couldn't. Uh, I I was like, what? Somebody bought my painting. Like it's 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 worthless. That's what I felt. Like I I felt there there are so many errors and the bird is too big and the Right. Red panda is too dull and sub like you, yeah. you know you have so many things and it was just an experiment. I I had used stencils for the border, yeah, and some kind of crazy stuff I had done. And the, the panda was in black and white. I don't know why, and and the lilac breasted roller was too colorful. Maybe because of that, but it was all done unintentionally. But somebody liked it, and later that same person, yes, bought like ten different paintings. As soon as I used to upload, they she used to buy it. Buy it. I used to upload, she used to buy it. It was like, I'm like, okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good. And all of them were from the same series. One bird and one animal saying yeah. hello to each other from different continents. I think the concept was pretty cute yeah. <laughs> in a way. Yeah, because what? maybe it was uh, me coming from India and I Being always felt, yeah, you, you always, I always felt out of place uh, when I came to Australia. Uh, e here, even here, right? Oh, even, uh, yeah, yeah, because I think it was the language and the accent and always underconfident with English and because I studied in my mother tongue. Right. I used to read a lot. I still read a lot, but yeah, speaking is different. So, so uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it was the way uh, of communicating my feelings. That, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Well, yeah. and you did it through your art, which is yeah. very typical. Yeah. And what I, I could see from you. Yeah. <laughs> and so what did your husband think about that when you started oh, selling paintings? What was, was his so thought? He was so proud. No, even before he was so proud. Yeah. He, uh, did he ever say, hey, maybe this is something you should do? You know what? Like he had been saying that since our bachelor's, like since he met me, mm. uh, like he came to know that I, I sketch uh, after a few months. Uh, yes. You know, we were friends. We right. were a big group. And I showed him my sketchbook and he was just, this is so beautiful, these puppies and the dog. Yeah. And so beautiful. And, and I'm like, nah, I'm just copying it from some of the books. You right. know, it's not like, it's not, there is nothing original with it. And he's like, no, it's, it's just amazing. And you should pursue it. Why don't you do it? Why don't you participate? And I never participated in any competitions yeah. during the college time. And there used to be competitions in engineering college. Um, but never did. And he always supported. Actually, he was the one who pushed me to, you know, when you come to Australia, if you don't have a job, you can always, Paint. you know, try to tap into your that side, yes. creative side, you know. And you must have talked about it, I bet. You must have said things to him, too. Like, yeah, of course. I, like, like, I really enjoyed doing this. Or you, he could see it in your face or the way you acted when you did that i'm sure like all uh, uh, all of us friends used to go to his place uh, 12 of us and his mom used to cook food for us and things like that and i used to scribble mm. in the corner so it was very apparent i was compulsive drawer or, yes yeah i used to sketch all the time like 
they used to watch movies or something and then I used to sketch, yeah, yeah yeah so th- he knew there is something wrong with this person <laughs> right. she is so <laughs> compelled but still she says she is a very passionate engineer and she's yeah. yes so there's some confusion going on so, so you're showing on blue thumb you have people that are buying your artwork then you get the job go down to brisbane Br- brisbane correct correct yes and then are you still painting on that job cuz that's uh, a little different deal right absolutely because it's the same thing even though it was really challenging and there was long hours and things like that on weekends i used to get time so weekends were completely free right and we didn't have a baby at that time so it was and the weather was beautiful yeah and you know it's like here um 8 o'clock you have sun you know s- right. the sunset happens around that time in the summer yes. and even in the winter you get really nice sunshine in the afternoon so i think it's the mood also and i started painting a lot more i started experimenting a lot uh, i started to use really high quality material at that time mm. because uh, it was also it also came from my husband that he he was like why are you being you know stingy with all this thing yeah <laughs> go buy the good stuff yeah he right. was like you have to buy the best you know material possible and yeah because you never know you know it, it's a good stuff you have to start believing right. in yourself and you're still going on the videos and tutorials and trying to learn as you're doing all it this it was 100% of that and yeah. so i had like i had a lot more artists i i was following i started listening to podcasts at that time it was big thing around 2018 yeah. i think i was I, up by then yeah yeah Then I started How did you find my podcast by uh, the way? I think I found your podcast through Jill Carver's podcast. So ah. what happened is I was listening to Carl's podcast which yes. is I think he's new newer than yours. Yes. Yeah. So I um uh, listened to her interview with him, like um his podcast yes. um uh, he him interviewing her and then I was so curious about this person that I started googling any <laughs> other thing I can find about her. and then i found yours mm. and you had two of them you yes. had one of them at that time i think yes and then yeah. i did another one later yeah so then i found out because i found out about your podcast just two years back i think mm. not before that it takes a while just yeah. like get, becoming an artist <laughs> it takes a while yeah <laughs> yeah and then i was tuned to it so yeah i was listening to all these podcasts constantly and i was painting a lot more i had my website done a lot better yeah when did you start your own website 2018 when i moved to brisbane so 20, i was trying uh, with wordpress different platforms like i have tried five platforms yeah <laughs> that doesn't surprise me yeah and <laughs> played around with each one of them and yeah finally i settled down with wix and doing it i love squarespace even now but yeah i'm okay with and so you were doing that job for the trucks the coal for 2 years right 3 3 4 years four total 3 3 and a half years yeah. now yeah and, and so and you finish that job you have a baby i have a baby then i go on maternity and i paint like crazy so i get pregnant <laughs> and the covid hits yeah which is 2020 yes at the start of 2020 and feb end everything is locked down right? right australia was extra super yeah careful right so they locked the not just the country borders but they locked the state borders and then they stopped uh, people from going anywhere so you were working from home so we started working from home uh, and i was finishing my stuff in few hours <laughs> <laughs> and my managers knew that yeah. my colleagues knew that they don't I'm care you're, you're done now <laughs> because the thing is what happened is our project was <laughs> almost go live right and there was just you know um, some production support related stuff yeah. coming up which was not a big deal so that was odd hours so they were okay with me doing whatever i want to do and then taking their handling those issues in odd hours right, right. so it was like really good mutual so you're putting in 10 12 hours a day every day painting more i think mark more how maybe. many yeah some uh, so <laughs> yeah <laughs> feed the baby paint feed I the baby ha- i have to, no, no baby wasn't even not yet no yeah. not okay. yet i was just pregnant and locked down right yeah, because okay. because of pregnancy and because of the unknowns i was complete locked down yeah my maddy my husband he was doing all the groceries and everything yeah. so i was at home painting all the time so yeah. weekends 12 plus hours yeah. and weekdays maybe 8 to 10 hours yeah so i was painting a lot and again two. this really was for me for you not going okay i can take this and make money or had it flipped um during that time it was it still wasn't money related thing because i wasn't still confident that 
because what was happening there was something wrong with my thought process at that time because i was trying to i was making a lot with my engineering because yes, I'm sure. it was high profile uh, really sure. important role right so i was trying to compare how much i would make with art with that which right. was really wrong thinking process yes and uh, yeah there was like fundamental <laughs> yeah something wrong with it so what happened is eventually when i j- i just focused on painting paintings were selling at the price i was putting it uh, on my website and on my on blue thumb yes. mostly blue thumb yes because nobody knew about my website yeah, and i wasn't doing much to let people know about my website we'll change that yeah <laughs> yeah oh okay yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> so then eventually at the end of uh, the year Uh, not the end of the year 2020 i had these episodes emergency things happening and then i finally delivered on 31st august and the whole award thing happened and then i was bed bedridden for 15 days and still i was sketching in between i'm sure uh, i was on really high painkillers because of the c section and things like that and nobody from india could come because of the covid yes and it was just me and madi he took 15 days break uh, and then after 15 days i could uh, do some stuff and then uh, i started painting again crazy painting again and i set up my easel outdoors uh, under the sun uh, we had blinds yeah. so i could control that and it was so amazing because i could just buy the biggest canvases in from the store yes and just splash paint around because it was outdoors i didn't have to worry about you know cleaning too much right. and things like that so i went crazy so i uh, also around that time i i had my i, I lost my mother so mm. i somehow became really really bold and confident and didn't care about anything i don't know somewhere that attitude came i i just i just life lost, is short maybe i just lost fear of anything anything yeah. losing anybody i i don't think i'll i'll it will affect me i think i have my art in me within me and i think there is no limit to it it's just a beginning it's just been few years and i'm just so happy and i just want to express that yes so actually my mom leaving me gave me such a tremendous perspective about life it's uh, it's undescribable yeah do you think some of that it just shows you life short and you've got to go for it and it's just once right I, i i believe life only comes once i don't believe in yes yeah so go so, for it go for it yeah and i have it in me me that's what i realized i have it in me and i c- cannot have this mindset of comparing how much i can earn from this and this is i we, we read this book a brain rules for babies when we had bronte and the book had a very important thing there were five important things and one of the most important thing is you need to uh, have friends in life that's the most important thing genuine relationships mm-hmm. is the most important thing besides that if you are earning close to 60 grand per annum you're good you don't have to earn 250 grand per annum right. or 300 grand per yeah. annum yeah to be happy and to go on to you know to have your you know to do whatever you want to do if you are earning that amount it's good and teach that to your kids Right. You know, the world will be much happier place if you do that because the bigger house and the better house and the bigger car and the better car never ends. The, all no, of those things that's right. end. So actually the book gave us me and my husband such a big perspective even he he actually explored a lot like he started his own business and you know he he did it before me 2 years before me when I had a stable job he took that chance. Right. and he was having a lot of fun and he was pushing me to do this as well like he was like who is stopping you we have we have worked hard enough for like you know 12 years yes. we have everything settled now now go for it why what yeah. what is it what is you know what is stopping you and it's like it's a crime <laughs> <laughs> you must feel like a different person in some ways completely different yeah person. i would think right just the way you absorb life and see life and see you know the way you look at art and you know it, it has to be completely different you know mark like since then since my attitude changed so many things have opened up i could have never imagined or planned for it it's like crazy 
crazy because you always think you know that uh, you you had your degree you're doing your profession right. whatever it is and you right. will die one day <laughs> right doing that <laughs> seriously it's like and i i'm so i feel extremely lucky that i have that feeling within me more than you know the safety or other aspects of it that feeling within me that you know i'm so confident today to just go on with this journey, right. this artistic journey and exploration you're an artist now that's it I'm when you tell people what you do now. you tell them you're an artist yeah. yeah yeah i'm a painter i said sometimes i'm an artist yeah yeah <laughs> do you remember when you said that the first time what was that like when you go when because it comes up i'm sure when somebody says very, what do you do i think it's very recent yeah it's very recent uh, i think it's few months yeah i have g- gathered the courage to say that yeah, yeah. i mean it's a, i'm i know i mean i remember going from doctor to when what do they say you do and it's like i know i'm an art dealer and it, i remember that it was like oh this is a big change yeah. but that's what i am and that's what i do Absolutely. now it feels odd when they say oh you're a doctor yeah well i was a doctor but yeah. i'm an art dealer that's what i do yeah. yeah and you're a painter that's what you do yeah and you know i don't add any kind of uh, importance or anything to it because i don't want uh, I don't want to take that pressure or anything right because it's just for people to understand what I do and that's it that's yes. where it ends yeah you know and for me I don't have a definition of what I who I am or what I do yeah for me you it's create. just what that's I that's what do. you do yeah yeah correct yeah. correct that's it it just doesn't have to be complicated it's it's there but you clearly have found birds yeah 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 uh, I think it's the state of mind maybe again because I I like to do I want to do a lot more I want to paint a lot mm-hmm. but I'm not somehow I'm not getting over them I'm not getting over them because You may not Yeah because what what is happening is when I do my sketches right um all the studies I'm doing um I already have the studies done for this year so it's like it's just piling up piling up and I really want to create create most of them into paintings mm. right so what is happening mm. people you know ask me that oh you really love birds and you want to i don't think that is the case i think it's just i'm not over them with i don't understand them completely i think and maybe i won't understand them completely till i die but mm. but you know it's it's just organic if if i feel at some point to do something else i'll right. start with it it's like that I but get for it. now i think i'm i'm too close to them Like yeah. it's it's difficult for me to maybe explore have um, space in my heart or mind or time to do anything else yeah but the birds are a lot there's a lot there yeah you know there's a lot there compositionally as an artist to yeah. try to yeah. capture the essence of what they are because they bring everything else with them right they bring the landscape with them they bring water bodies with them they bring sky with them they bring you know mm-hmm. They bring yeah. sometimes humans with them and everything else with them. You know, you can have a boat in the background or seascape and still have birds in it. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I can explore everything else, but somehow I'm not still okay to not add birds in that everything else. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. you know what I mean. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I still, I, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know. Yeah. So when you, you, there must have come a time when you had this epiphany. and said okay this is it because you got to tell these people at the coal people that you know you're done right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and what yeah. what happened then so i i did it very slowly uh-huh. <laughs> so <laughs> when i went back to the work yes. i started two days a week only yes so you can imagine i was painting five days a week I can. even at that time and mari he's a very passionate father <laughs> he takes it very seriously so he was enjoying his time with bronte so he was giving me as much time i want um and i was painting a lot during that time and my uh, team knew that my team supported me like crazy a- any new painting i did i showed it on a big screen to them <laughs> and they were so like f- they were my biggest cheerleaders yes. back in nbn and even in bhp both uh, the offices i i think i i'm very lucky to have them in my life and they're still in touch with me after i told them i, I want to leave they were so supportive uh, and they were like yeah of course you have to do it we are not surprised and we are sure you will enjoy it and you will do was it was that a big day when you actually told them it was a big night yeah <laughs> oh, okay sorry when i told them it was a big day but the last day 
uh, was the drinks. Yes. And then the dinner. Yeah. And then the drinks. Yeah. And then it was such a fun night because few of the guys flew from Perth. Few of the Nokia people came. So it was my consultancy company, Titan, and the BHP, and the Nokia. It was a big party with a lot uh-huh. of people, and they were so happy, uh, Mark. They were so happy and supportive, and they, and you know, I had this feeling that they were so excited to be part of my journey. I'm and sure to follow my journey further. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was like, it was really. Yeah, they could see it. Yeah, they want to be part of it, you know. Everybody, even in the U.S., we are going to Salt Lake City. We are going to meet our engineering friends. They're yes. coming with their families. We're going to Grand Teton and Yellowstone. I don't know how much we can enter and how much we yes. can explore. Yes, that's them. now. So that's why you're in the U.S., one of the things. Yes, yes. yeah, yeah. So uh, they are so supportive. They were the ones who actually sent me the first packet of uh, you know, all the color pencils and some of the paints, which I couldn't find in Australia, even back in 2014. Yes, Uh, so they have been sending me stuff and even now they were like do you need those panels can we bring some because you will have l- l- right. luggage like baggage limitation right. so so everybody is part of it you know it's the whole it's right. the whole gang i i am not the only one i think everybody is part of it my brother is always there my uncles aunties yeah. they are really supportive everybody uh, they're happy for it they're very happy for me and they feel i think they can see very clearly now that it's inevitable and Yes. And maybe she was born to do this, but yeah. you are born to do it. Yeah, yeah clearly. Yeah. I mean, I've seen your paintings online. Yeah, you clearly have skill <laughs> set. Big skill set. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so That's really flattering. Yeah, no, it's really true. <laughs> yeah. And so so if people wanted to find your work, mm-hmm. what's your website? Give us the website. Maybe um, you have an Instagram account and that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, my Instagram account is also Karibu Fine Art and my website is also karibufineart.com. So Spell that. K A R I B U fine art so yes. karibu means welcome yes. in swahili uh, ah. language masai people's language yes. and we formed that company back in 2016 uh, 27 2016 uh, 2016 when we went to africa kenya tanzania and we visited all the national parks and and that was as so art for art when you formed it for uh, yeah it was yeah. formed for art yeah. yeah that company but i never opened a website right away or anything it was done all by my husband yes He, have everything ready whenever <laughs> i wanted knew. to <laughs> yeah you knew you were going yeah that's yeah so, so that's the website and the instagram account yeah. so i think this is something you can help other people with those people that are out there listening who go i want to be like you what do you tell them i mean you had a great career at another thing you could be making a lot of money and winning awards you're not you're painting i think i think a lot of things depend on you know that person's situation because see i can say what is my what was my situation m- what my life has been right because i come from a really good family very well educated and things like that so whatever i life i had i had a i had an adventure right i i loved my engineering i i i think <laughs> i don't know i i think i would have missed it if i would have missed it but i didn't know i wouldn't have known that I had missed it but I don't know. So I I enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, but what I would say is, you know, see see at some point of time you don't know what you want in life. So take your time. Take your time explore things. Don't waste time in thinking. Mm. And you know, um in uh, procrastinating or e- even what do what what is the word in english where you just contemplating yeah you know and not acting upon it i think the most important thing is acting upon it whether you want to do anything anything not just art i think the most important thing for me was to not think about oh i want to be an artist and this will happen that will right. it was just buying the stuff and starting to paint and sketch and again you know get right. into learning new skills and things like that and even now i feel that you know i don't want to become the biggest business person because i listen to your podcast erin erin hansen podcast and she has inspired me like crazy <laughs> that you can become a millionaire with by you know painting because you, you know everybody wants to do everything the best right. you know so uh, i think you can do that even i can do that but i shouldn't be dreaming for it i should just act upon the steps it takes to go there right. you know just just go act. down the river that's it let it flow that's and where it, it ends up maybe you end up at a big lake maybe you don't absolutely the, 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 just take the first step towards it right and that's why i joined miriam shulman's mastermind 
after <laughs> listening to your podcast and <laughs> i'm going to meet her oh, i'm very flying nice. specially to new york to meet her oh that's wonderful yeah, yeah she was really interesting yeah uh-huh. she is so much fun so i'm doing her um the course yes. from last three and a half months and enjoying it like crazy it has changed everything for me maybe that has you know also helped me get the confidence up yes. and things like that because she is like a ch- biggest cheerleader for me now she is so i bet yeah oh my it's God. easy to cheerlead for you i got to ah, tell come you on. <laughs> no it's true <laughs> no no she has no. been a really good support and she's uh-huh. uh, yeah uh-huh. she's guiding me very in a very customized style yes uh, so she guides everybody according to their Yeah, What she's give, she's helping you along with the business aspect of art as well as I mean because it is a business, you know, and you have to approach it that way um, unless you literally don't need any money and you no, can and just do it for yourself. No, and it's a healthy way to approach it. It's yeah. not just, you know, it's it's a healthy mindset, it's a very yes. positive mindset yes. stuff and she has this mindset coach yeah. every week and oh my gosh, that just changes every, that actually that ch- can change you as a person those things. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's that's what it's I So it's say. appropriate then you are on this podcast. I still can't believe it and I don't think I'm in the right place. I don't know. Uh-huh. <laughs> trust me you are. I yeah. trust me you are 100%. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Priya Gore. You're wonderful. Thank you for coming. It was a delightful podcast. I really enjoyed it. I really did. I had so much fun. Thank you so much, Mark. <laughs> I think I'm just living in this dream still. Uh, uh, I can't believe that I'm no. sitting in front of you. And go know. see her wor- her art. It's really tremendous. Uh, the Art Dealer Diaries, Priya Gore. Uh, Thanks. That was cool. Thanks.